when we talk about restoration and preservation of our culture, we look at art first, and we wonder what does it mean. We talk about identity, and we look at the carvings, and we wonder what does it mean. We talk about territorial claims, and how is that pertinent to what these totems stand for? What does it all mean? That's Bo Dick speaking in a new documentary that centers on his work, both as an Indigenous artist and activist. The masks he created were well regarded for bridging the divide between contemporary and traditional Indigenous art. And as an activist, he called for reconciliation and accountability, bringing a traditional copper-breaking ceremony to the legislature and to Parliament to shame both levels of government into fixing their relationships with Indigenous people. After encountering his art, filmmaker Natalie Boll set out to explore the many sides of Dick as an artist and activist. She says it was easy to begin working with him. When I met him for the first time, it was like a, he just embraced the relationship. I felt like I'd known him for so long. And he was just such a kind, um, inclusive person and got all the crew involved in the project and really made it about everybody collaborating, which was really beautiful. So we brought um, a camera and crew up to Alert Bay, and that was really the first time I had ever met Bo in person. And we spent the weekend in Alert Bay and pretty much filmed the whole day. And it was quite unique because we were staying on top of a bed and breakfast, and Bo's carving studio was underneath the bed and breakfast. Alert Bay itself was such an intense beautiful, amazing location to be filming. Like, you can just feel this intense um, spirit there. A wide range of people took part in Ball's documentary. Conservationists David Suzuki, activists Alexandra Morton, carvers, artists, and family members recall their relationships with Bo Dick. A portrait emerges of a genius carver who felt a deep connection with his own culture and the wider world. Bull says many of the people she interviewed for the film had the same thing to say about Dick. He had a certain magnetism and intuitively knew how to connect with others. He just knew how to connect with people. And it's funny, when the film came out, a lot of people were like, I didn't know Bo was an activist. I knew him as an artist. Or the activism community would say to us, hey, we didn't even know he was an artist. So he had all of these sides to him. We were with government officials, we were with students in school, we were with the neighbor next door. You know, he just really was able to connect on a human level with everyone we encountered. Linnea Dick is Bo's daughter. She worked closely with her father in the last two years of his life and speaks about her relationship with him in the film. She participated in the Walk for Reconciliation and her father's copper-breaking ceremony on the lawn of the B.C. legislature in 2013 and says it profoundly changed her. It was one of the greatest experiences I have ever had and probably ever will have is recognizing just how many people out there want to fight for our world and believe in a greater place and believe in a higher power. It was a very supernatural experience that made me stronger in so so many ways, you know, mentally, physically, spiritually. And um, I think that that was a huge turning point in my healing and the healing of many others. And while many people knew the public persona of Bo Dick, his daughter Linnea says the film highlights the strong personal connections he made with others. But I think out of all his magical qualities, one of his greatest gifts was the ability to recognize other people's gifts before they did. And so I always encourage people when they're watching the documentary to think of themselves and think about the gifts that they have to offer the world because... The thing that gave him the most fulfillment was watching other people, you know, find their place in the world and create a change. Recently, Linnea traveled to Australia with the film and says it's been a way to continue a relationship with her father. Of course, when he passed away, it was quite devastating. And my dad was my hugest influence and inspiration in life. And so to lose him, I had this sense of... Um, lost, but also feeling lost. I didn't know my own direction. And so this has given me an opportunity to share who I am while also continuing on this journey with him. Bo Dick died in March 2017 after he did not recover from a stroke several months before. He was in his early 60s. Linnea says her father's death left a gap in her community. There was a bit of fear 
like what do we do now where do we go from here and so I think that it's really just um, given us the encouragement to step forward and and find our voice because he inspired that in us but while he was here we just you know we really depended on him for those opportunities and now we're all we were lost for an amount of time but now we're like okay where where do we go to next how do we continue on this amazing legacy how do we keep um, creating these changes for our people how do we save ourselves and um, it's an ongoing struggle and I mean colonization is going to take generations to overcome but um, there's a great sense of hope amongst our people and my dad was one of those people that cultivated that hope. The film Meet Bo Dick, maker of Monsters, debuted at film festivals this year. Director Natalie Bull says his passing has given the documentary an added poignancy. I think that it's um, very emotional to release the film after his death. He was just such an inspiring person to meet that you just felt like people really needed to meet Bo. And the film gives the audience the opportunity to do that. Many interviews with people who knew the artist shed light on the impact his work had. But Bo Dick's own words color in the connection between his art and his activism. This art form is ceremonial art. It comes from ancient times, ancient experiences of our ancestors. It's given to us as a gift from the Creator. It's like a broken down vehicle that hasn't been running very well lately because it hasn't been taken care of. Our whole culture has been shattered. It's up to the artists now to pick up the pieces and try and put them together and put them back where they belong. Yeah, it does become very political. Uh, Because beyond political, it becomes very deep and um, emotional.